Hey there friends, so here are nine apps that you should know as a PhD student or a postdoc in ecology or related fields. The first of course is a writing app because you should always be writing. And so most people will use Microsoft Word and it's important to be familiar with it because it is also the kind of app that people use most commonly. So even if you write in another app, at some point if you have collaborators, you will have to go to that app and also before you submit your manuscript. So become familiar, of course, with Microsoft Word. Now, I do all my writing in Google Docs, so you can also do it in any other online app. That is also worth to become familiar with because there are some idiosyncratic differences between Word and Google Doc that become really problematic if you don't know them. So I think this is really worth investing some time getting familiar with these writing apps. The second one is a reference manager. And I have to admit that I only very recently in my career started a reference manager. Now I can't even think how I was doing that before. But, um, you know, become familiar with a reference manager. And I use Zotero, but you can use any other reference manager that works equally well. And what you should be paying attention to is that it interfaces well with your writing app. So for example, for me, that was one of the reasons why I went for Zotero, because it works in Google Docs, but then also you can transfer the document into Word for working with other collaborators or for eventual submission. So that is, I think, quite important. Then, of course, you will be doing presentations, whether you use talks or posters as your tool, and so therefore become familiar with the presentation app. People generally use PowerPoint or it's open a source equivalent, whatever it is, just become familiar with that app so you don't make any mistakes and so you use it also to maybe not its fullest potential but to some potential. <laughs> the fourth is a graphics app. Graphics are becoming more and more important in science, at least in our field, but I'm sure it's universally true. So make sure you, be you become familiar with a good uh, vector graphics app. There's many that are free, uh, like Inkscape, but there's others that you have to pay for, like Adobe products and others. It doesn't really matter what, but become familiar with one. Graphs actually mean conceptual figures, for example, in your proposal or also in papers, but also data figures, because data figures these days become more involved and also contain much more interpretation than just the raw data. So it is super important <laughs> to become very familiar with a graphic software of your choice, because it will help you a lot. Now five, and maybe this should have been at the top of the list, I don't know, but if you're in ecology and environmental science, of course, you need to be super familiar with R and everything around it. Nothing works here without statistics. And so just become familiar with the running of that app and with that language, really, it's more like the language than the app, but this is one app you should become very familiar with, for sure. Six, on the more practical side, calendar app. I use Google Calendar, but you can use whatever calendar app you want. But that is important to keep track of things and maybe to also set yourself milestones or whatever you use that app for, but become familiar with it and integrate it with your devices. Seven, for networking, become familiar with some of the social media apps, for example, Twitter or Instagram or any of these others, TikTok, YouTube or whatever. I think it's very good to pick one to concentrate on. For me, this has initially been Twitter. And there is a lot of things to this app that the casual user will not know. So I think you can really enhance your experience with Twitter if you are more familiar with the workings of that app. And that is time well invested. And I have a video for that specifically, the link in the description. Eight is a note-taking app. There are many of them out there. And I must admit, I am not using a note-taking app right now, but I think if I were to start again, I would to keep all my notes organized. Right now, it's pretty disorganized. And maybe I'll start using one one of these days. But I think if I were to start again, this is my recommendation. Get a note-taking app and use it. Now, in terms of communication, I think it is very good to be familiar with the communication tool that your lab environment uses. For example, Slack, if you use that, or some other uh, chat app. Make sure you become familiar with how this thing works because it will enhance your experience a lot also in terms of video conferencing software, make sure you're familiar with how this thing works so you don't have the malfunctions when it becomes important. So those are really things uh, that it's worth investing time in. And that's it. I mean, there may be other apps that you find useful. For example, there are apps that silence other apps. You can focus more on your tasks like Forest, or there's apps that help you with project man management like a Trello 
or that help you do conceptual mapping. These are more specific apps and you may find them useful as well, but I think that list of nine is uh, pretty basic and everybody should be familiar with those. If you have any other suggestions, let me know in the comments. Love to hear from you. And with that, thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.